Happy New Year, Africa. This is ETV Ghana's African Women's Voices show. And my name is Eunice Tony. It's really splendid to get to meet you again after all the wonderful times we spent with you. Okay, this year promises to be very exciting and we are all starting afresh because all things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. And here at GMA, Global Media Alliance Group, we always work with themes for every month. And for this month, we thought it wise to say that it's a month for a fresh start. This is to say that if it didn't go well last year, you have an opportunity to have a fresh start this year. And if it did go well, you have an opportunity to even make it better. And that's why we are saying that new year comes with new resolutions and we bet you have one. Every year, we start on a good note, trying hard to meet the resolutions made by and large we drop off without hitting the threads but 2021 is a fresh one and your favorite broadcasting stations are ready to help you carry out resolutions and when we talk about our broadcasting stations we're talking about yfm etv and happy fm so tune into happy fm or etv this january and let's start right GMABC January theme month is a fresh start. So um, the fresh start for, for us is going to be an interesting topic and we have somebody who is going to be talking to us about this fresh start of ours. We've chosen a, a good topic that we know is going to carry you through this month and even the entire year. And if you've been following us on social media, our first topic in this fresh start month is all about self-confidence. We are going to let you know how self-confidence is going to be able to get you to cross bridges and even cross obstacles that you never thought you could ever cross. But first, I'll be taking you over to the 60 Seconds Update segment where we give you news about what's happening to women in Ghana, Africa and across the world. Once you're an African woman, the ETV Ghana's African Women's Voices lenses will definitely get to you. So do stay tuned as that comes up. Widow of the late Infantiman Member of Parliament, Echo Kwansa Hayford, has been given a position in the majority leadership in Parliament. Mrs. Ophelia Mensa Hayford, now MP for Infantiman and MP for Tolon, Habib Idrisu are now Deputy Chief Whips. This comes after Ghana's 2020 presidential and parliamentary elections. Following the elections, the current parliament is expected to be dissolved for a new parliament to be sworn in. This is going to be the country's eighth parliament. It is also likely to be a hung parliament since no party was able to obtain an absolute majority in the parliamentary race. In Zimbabwe, where girls as young as 10 are forced into marriage due to poverty or traditional and religious practices, a teenage taekwondo enthusiast is using the sport to give girls an improvised community a fighting chance at life. 17-year-old Natireshi, a martial arts fan since the age of five who is now using taekwondo to rally young girls and mothers to join hands and fight child marriage, said, not many people do taekwondo here, so it is fascinating for the girls, both married and single. I use it to get the attention. Young girls and classmates of Natureshi, who found themselves in early marriages, explained how their marriages have turned into bondages, including abuse, health complications, and being hungry, therefore leading them to enthusiastically follow the instructions to stretch, kick, strike, punch, and spar. Mosibidu, Joe, Mathol, and Komoto Ramodipa are two South African sisters who quit their jobs as an investment banker and an optometrist, respectively, to start a diamond polishing business at a time when the price of the commodity was so low and unattractive to investors. Despite the gloomy picture of the sector, the two sisters were unfazed and opened Kwame Diamonds, located in Johannesburg. Interestingly, the company is the only firm in South Africa run by sisters and according to Women in Diamond, the sisters manage the only women-owned polishing nosiness in the world. The South African sisters employ and train other women in the industry, a move seen as part of their own contribution of increasing female participation in the sector. 
Former Malawi President Joyce Banda has expressed concern over the continued exclusion of rural women and girls in development programs and policies, although they make up the larger population in the country. She has also deplored the tendency by various stakeholders to speak on behalf of rural women instead of giving them a platform to voice out their concerns by themselves. Banda made interesting remarks in Lilongwe during the gender barometer under the theme Generation Equality Beijing Plus 25. Realizing gender equality and the empowerment of all women and girls, saying the theme is of paramount importance to all African women. Popular Ghanaian female songstress Sister Fia has been ranked the number one Ghanaian female artist by One Play Africa. One Play Africa platform is dedicated to promoting, supporting the music industry, has revealed its top 10 list of best performing female musicians in Ghana in the year 2020 under review. She has been a sensation during the year, having churned out numerous hit singles and awakened the industry with the beef that took the music industry by storm. The weather hit maker demonstrated her versatility in music with some ruthless rap vibes accompanied by her strong vocals. We say kudos to her for emerging number one out of lots of the talented female artists in Ghana. <laughs> amazing amazing i am so excited to have you right here you know on the show and it's really beautiful this song the first time i watched it i was like wow so much energy thank you so the very voice much. on point and i was like where has this lady been okay <laughs> viewers if you're just trying getting in i want you to know that the guest we have today is really energetic she's firebrand and she's all out so fasten your seat belts, grab your Voltic because we are really going to take you on a roller coaster ride, a beautiful <laughs> one, okay? Today we have Cassandra Cassandra here in the studios of ETV for African Women's Voices show. And when you watch the video, you can tell that there's a lot of expression of self-confidence. You can feel it, you can feel the vibe. And we want to understand what is behind this self-confidence that is emanating and it's just shining through Cassandra, Cassandra. So uh, we're going to be asking you all the questions today, and we want to believe you're going to give us very <laughs> frank <laughs> answers. <laughs> I'm used to giving frank answers. You're used to giving <laughs> frank answers, right? Candid. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. So mm -hmm. you're very welcome once again, Thank Cassandra. Thank you so very much for having me. It's the first time um, coming to ETV. Mm -hmm. um, I think I've been on Happy FM before, okay. um, but it's the first time um, coming here. And thank you, thank you, thank uh, you, <laughs> thank you. I think the first question <laughs> that comes to people is, yeah. is she Ghanaian? Because, I mean, you're singing Jablani, yes. and that's something from South Africa. Yes. So what made you choose Jablani? I'm 100% Ghanaian, Ghanaian, even the South Africans know. Meditate your muscle or South Africa, sir. Dema. I love being Ghanaian. <laughs> I enjoy being Ghanaian. I am a Ghanaian. No, but what's the behavior? Even look at your hair. Everything uh, about it is so South African. Um, you know, the, the influence, the hair, I don't know, the hair, no, it, it, it was merely coincident. Mm -hmm. Because I, I came back home, I think, around um, 20, I lived in SA for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. And 2016, I decided to come back home. And when I came back home, me bore rasta, and I went to to my hairline. Let me go for you, me chai. So when I when I cut it, my my family was like, it suits you. Okay. My friends were like, it suits you. So I had a shoot, and on the day of the on the day of the shoot, I had my wig, but I went with my short hair. Mm -hmm. When it was time for me to put on the wig, the producer says, no, no, use the short we hair. We want you this that way. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> and it became so the brand. Everything about yes. Cassandra now then is all about the Then it became the brand. Hair. Yes. Beautiful. So our viewers, we're going to take it away right now. So uh, we're going to be asking her what she feels actually is self-confidence. You definitely have your definition of self-confidence. I have mine. Yeah. I think it has to do with attitude, yeah. you know, and how you trust yourself and believe that you can get things done. That's what I think. But we're going to be finding out from Cassandra what she also thinks about um, self-confidence. What would you say is self-confidence for anyone who is watching us right now? I like the way you put it that everybody has their own definition to self-confidence. Mm -hmm. I mean, we all have our encounters with self-confidence. From my perspective and from my experience, self-confidence is a feeling of well-being. Okay. And the best part of self-confidence is an acceptance of your body and mind and a belief in your skills and experience. 
So it's in three folds. First of all, it's a feeling of well-being, mm -hmm. a state of well-being, an acceptance of your body and your mind, and a belief in your abilities and experience. That is the holistic um, 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 approach or the holistic explanation of what self-confidence self is. is. So someone might think that a person only having a, um, a degree or seven masters is what makes a person confident, confident. but then they, they're only looking at one side of it, a very minute side of it, because there's also the experience part. So a person might not have the skills, might not have the certificates, might not have the ability, but has an experience in something, and that can also culminate into into self-confidence. Beautiful. All right, so that is to say that sometimes how you also grow up has a lot to do with the kind of confidence you're able to build because we have children growing up in homes where they are shut down, yes. they're not allowed to express themselves. Yes. We've also gotten some children too who are allowed to talk and mm -hmm. they don't also caution them as to mm -hmm. what to say. So all those things also contribute to the level of confidence that we've got. Very true, very true. When it comes to confidence, I believe that from a, a, um, a, a younger age, it should be built. Mm -hmm. Because confidence, I was talking to my brother, he said, confidence is like a muscle. And I say, you got it right. Okay. It's like a muscle, you need, to, you need to work it in order for the muscle to become stronger. So it's something that it's already there. But when you bring it out and everybody shuts you down, mm -hmm. it will come a time where it will not show at all, or you decide not to use it. You decide, I'm not, worth, I'm not worthy of talking, I'm not wanted here, I'm not gonna do it. It's very important to start young. But I always say that it's not too late okay. for you to start at my age, for you to start at your age. It is not it's too, never late. too late. To as long to as you're still strong enough to continue this life and the purpose that God has given to you, then you've got to do something about it. You have the chance to change it. Okay, we'll be going for a quick commercial break. When we return, we'd like to hear her story. So do stick and stay. We'll be right back. You're welcome back to ETV Ghana's African Women's Voices show. Cassandra Cassandra is here and she's talking to us about self-confidence. Now we are about to hear her story and how this all started for her. So Cassandra, okay. we'd like to hear your story around self-confidence. All right. So it all started, um, it actually started this year mm. um, when I decided to, to start the self-confidence awareness campaign. And it's because I realized that in my life there have been different stages where circumstances or people have tried to pull me down mm -hmm. and that has completely eroded my confidence. I've got like two or three or um, let's say many case studies, but I will dwell on three. Okay. But the one reason why I actually launched the self-confidence awareness campaign is, has to do with my skin. Okay. So sometime in 2018, I'm a media person, but in 2018, I decided to go back to SA um, to seek treatment. And that's because I, I, my skin was completely, um, you know, um, damaged with serious acne. I couldn't touch my face. I couldn't do, I couldn't go out. I couldn't take pictures. Absolutely nothing. And the, um, um, the treatment I was on, um, you know, was, was draining me, was taking a lot out of me. I had to be in the room most times of my life. And I, I, I feel like that was a very um, difficult, but very, when I look back to what happened, I'd say it was all good. God knew what he was doing. Mm. Self-confidence starts with you yourself, identifying who you are. Mm. But I really like what, what you said about the fact that you had um, acne in yes. your skin. Yes. So did it pull people away from you, friends? What was really happening? What was putting you down? You know, the thing did about- you not feel mm. beautiful enough? What the thing feeling? about, um, about uh, the skin is that the skin is the largest organ, um, mm -hmm. but it's, it's mostly the, um, the, the least cared for organ or the, um, the one we, 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 we tend to ignore. So when, when something happens to your skin, remember that your face and your, your, your body is the first thing that people see. So it was all over my face, my chest, my back, and it was painful and it was so bad. The scarring was so bad, I couldn't do anything, I couldn't go anywhere. And treatment, um, um, you know, doesn't allow me to put any makeup. So it means that you cannot go anywhere. Mm -hmm. The first thing that people see is your face. So if there's any scarring, if there's anything that, that says to you that 
people are not looking at me. They're looking at all the, you know, the, the pain on my body or they're looking at the scarring on my body. It becomes very difficult for you to go out. Mm -hmm. So after I saw treatment and the skin was healed, I decided to go on this journey of self-confidence in collaboration with Sira Beauty Clinic. Sira Beauty Clinic is a franchise of DMK in Ghana. And it is the DMK product that I used that actually cleared my skin. So mm. it was just right for me to launch this awareness campaign in collaboration with the skin treatment. They are located inside Palace Mall, by the way. So the self-confidence awareness campaign is in collaboration with them. However, I've got like two or three case studies of situations that came into my life that completely, completely eroded my confidence. For example, I say in a relationship I was in, Subtly, my partner will continuously say that my legs were not beautiful. Mm. And it wasn't that he was like, you know, fighting or making it too loud. You know, you say it in a very subtle way. Oh, South Africa for an answer me pelfa, you know, some funny, funny stuff. After a while you realize that when you have to wear a skirt, you don't want to wear a skirt. Mm -hmm. When it's time to be intimate, you don't want to be intimate. intimate yes. Or we should put off the lights. So I, I, <laughs> I moved from that relationship to another one. And then I realized this person's like, why should we put on the, why, sh why should the lights go off? I'm like, no, they're like, you're beautiful. And this person continuously telling me how beautiful my legs were. No, but I'm did this person <laughs> actually see your face? Funny. Did the person see your face before approaching you? The second person? Yes, did by that time my skin acne? was my skin was healed. Oh, okay. Yes, by that time my skin was healed. So um, I'm I'm now going to other parts of the body that had been put down. So um, this person will say, "You you've got such beautiful legs." In fact, we're going on a ten we're going to a tennis game. I want you to wear shorts. It was from there I even learned how to wear shorts. shorts. I'm thinking, okay, I'm beautiful. All right, I want to show this part. I want to show that part. I'm like, oh, okay. You know what I like about <laughs> your story is that a lot of ladies can really relate to yes. what you're talking about. Absolutely. So let's just step back a little bit. So the first person that you were with, did you have this acne before you met the no, person? No, no. The acne one is the reason why I started the self-confidence awareness mm -hmm. campaign, which is just two years ago that it happened mm -hmm. with a skin problem. Okay. But with the um, with, with, with this the relationship. with the relationship one, I'm talking about ten years ago. Okay. Yes. So it's also something that also affected yes. your self-confidence. It's also something you had that a skin affected. challenge, and years earlier, yes. you also had relationship challenges, yes. and it had to do with not being properly appreciated. Yeah. More like I like your legs this yeah. way, or okay. Yeah. So Certain comments at, at all that times. Was demeaning. Yes, at all times you 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 wanna you don't you don't feel worthy, or you feel like the person is doing you a favor mm -hmm. because if they say that you 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 don't match their specs or you don't match their <laughs> their definition of of, of who um, their woman should be, and they're with you. With, at all times, you feel like they're doing you a favor, which is very, very bad. Very bad. Because okay. in this second relationship, if the person wanted to abuse me, he would have easily abused me because my confidence was just in the gutter. Mm. It would have been very easy. Yeah, because you always want the person to feel like, you, to okay, feel, I'm good enough, yes. I'm good enough. And, and that's that where reason, you're always asking, you to do Eunice, am I looking beautiful? Um, you're always asking your partner, you want that affirmation before you can even step out or you can even do anything. Am I beautiful? Is this good enough? Should I wear it this way? Should I wear it that way? You know, there is no point that you feel like I'm beautiful. Okay. I am saying I am beautiful, not because someone else is telling me I'm beautiful. You've got to believe inside of you inside that of you're you. beautiful. It starts from you. It starts from you sitting down and finding what is your unfair advantage? Mm -hmm. What is it that you've got? that someone else doesn't have. And that becomes the advantage that you are going to rule your world with. Because and we all have got our advantages. We all have. We all have. No one person has it all. Mm -hmm. No person has it all. You can go in, maybe on the outward, the person has got the legs, blah, 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 but has got something that when it comes to that part, the person keeps quiet and you become the louder person. So you always have an advantage. That is how God has made it. You always have something. And that's why you were created, because there's a part of the puzzle that you alone can fit in. Mm -hmm. And that is your unfair advantage. And until you find that, it'll be difficult, because you're always trying to capitalize on perhaps your weakness, rather than capitalizing on your strength, on that thing that you have that the other person doesn't have. OK, so have you identified your unfair advantage? It could be your eyebrow. It could be maybe your eyeballs. It could even be your hair. 
yes. or some part of your body that is really nice that's the advantage you always have to emphasize and say I'm a beautiful woman because I've got this and I know that I'm good enough you don't need anyone to you know always keep affirming yeah. that you're looking beautiful or that you can do stuff you need to tell yourself from within that I can do this this is what she did and it helped her to be able to boost her confidence we're going to be finding out a lot more about how she was able to overcome some of the challenges that she had she's mentioned first that she had a skin challenge she had relationship and what would be the third one then employer your employer okay <laughs> so what happened <laughs> what happened with your employer <laughs> i say if they watch it they'll be like mm. <laughs> That's a very hard place to talk about. Okay, you know what? Grab your Vortec right now. We are going to be right back after this commercial break. Please stay tuned. And you're welcome back to ETV Ghana's African Women's Voices Show. And this is January, our month of starting fresh. And for our African Women's Voices Show, we have thought it wise to start with self-confidence. Women need a boost of self-confidence all the time. So we want to let you know that as you start right and as you start fresh this year, start it right with some level of self-confidence and keep growing it. It will keep getting better. And in the studio today, we have Cassandra Cassandra, someone who actually had challenges with self-confidence. If you're just joining us, she mentioned that she had her first challenge, you know, with her skin. It made her not look so beautiful, so she felt really uncomfortable and was hiding from people. And secondly, she also had a challenge when it came to her relationship because she was not being appreciated enough. She was always made to feel that she wasn't good enough or beautiful enough. And then she was going to tell us about the third challenge she had that was affecting her self-confidence so just stick and stay she'll be telling us right now so Cassandra yeah. you mentioned that the third one is who <laughs> the third one is my employer your employer tell us how yeah. that affected that your is one other case study that I have so amongst all other case studies that I have in my life mm -hmm. these are the three major ones so quite recently I worked for an organization that um, my employer was very verbally abusive so you will go for meetings and the kind of words she would use and the kind of emails that will come. A she? Yes, it's a she. Okay. You will continually, um, you know, and, and, and it doesn't, you see, these things do not happen like abrupt. It okay. happens over time. So one thing comes, you know, you realize that, okay, you've, you've passed that one. Another one comes, you realize that you've passed that one. Another abusive word comes, you realize, okay, fine. You've gone to sleep and pray over it and thinking, hmm, okay, I will, I will, I will get over this. You know, you go consistently up to a point where now you realize that you've lost your confidence. Mm -hmm. But it, did, it wasn't I who, who realized, who, 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 who saw that I lost my confidence. Someone said to me that, are you for real? Seriously, you talking like that? You crying? You, I mean, the person this is not the woke me. We know. This is not the Cassandra we know. You've got a lot of talent. You've got a lot in you. I cannot believe, I cannot even stand it that you're crying over someone else telling you that you're useless. And you know what? A lot of times, some of these things get to us from our employers because somehow we are made to believe that our employers yeah. are very confident, they yeah. get things right, and they know yeah. it all. Yeah. They don't make mistakes. No. So when you have an employer who is abusing you or making you feel yeah. you're not good enough or you don't know your job, it definitely will not make you feel good because it will look, look like, okay, this is the standard, and it doesn't look like I'm even meeting yeah. up to the standard. And you know the difference? Before working for them, I had worked for an organization. I work in the, I'm, I'm a financial advisor for an insurance company for about three years. So I worked for Sandam in, Ga, in, in SA, sorry. And my bosses were different. So, so um, you know, where you need to be backed up, they back you up. Where you need help, they take you to training. Where you need, you understand me. It's not that thing of you're useless, you're, you know, running you down. Meanwhile, there's an 80% good. And all that has been overlooked because they, 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 they sometimes tend to feel like if I'm to praise her, mm -hmm. or she's going to feel like, Mani pani timu yane de. if the yeah. person is doing it well, let a person know they're doing it well. 
and where they fall short, that is where leadership comes in. That is where you say, I would like you to do it this way or that way. Being abusive is never the way to go. Because what is the point if you lose, end up losing the, that, that great empl employee just because you're being abusive? You see, the mistake people do is that sometimes they feel like, or well, sometimes they kind of pick up. You know, human beings also pick up when you're afraid or when you're losing your confidence. Mm -hmm. They can pick up that this person, Oni mm -hmm. So So I, 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 what I did to take back my confidence was to leave that job. I will not say that um, it's always the way to go. No, that's not it. That was what you I did. took my power by doing that. I took back my self-confidence by doing that. But there are a lot of different ways you can do. You can also go to your boss and communicate and say, I know you're my boss. I respect you. I love you. I love the job. But these words pull me down. These words make me cry. Can you please not use these? Refrain from using certain words. You understand? So there's always a way. But whatever you do, take back the power. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, it will cost you. It will cost you. In no time, you who are a great person, who know how to do something, when you are called upon to do that thing, you shine away. Mm -hmm. Because you're like, oh, what would they say? I might fail. What if? What if? What if? You've lost it. That's, that's the end. And you might not ever be able to take it again. So I say that you need to take back that power. Take back your self-confidence, and it is by it is by doing something about it. Yeah, I was going to talk about insecurities because what you're saying now means that a lot of times when you begin to lose your self-confidence, you begin to have insecurities. Like even in your relationship, you yes. at a point felt like, okay, uh, maybe they're going to leave me for someone yes. else because I'm not good enough. Yes, you get it, and then you have insecurity even at your job place because yes. you feel like I may not get it right yes. because they always say. I'm not doing it well. And the, and the next person that comes, you're already scared. Have they come to take my job? Oh, maybe they bring in someone to replace me. You know, you're never really safe in, in, in that environment. In that environment. It's toxic. So one of the ways which you were able to gain back your self-confidence yeah. was you took your power yes. back. Yes. You know, and that was by walking away. And you suggested that in some cases too, you could also walk up to your boss and then tell yes. your boss that, this is just not yes. right for me. I don't want it this way. Are there other ways that people who are feeling insecure could also, or other approaches they could also use to be able to get back their, their self confidence? Power. Apart from communicating to the person that you feel is putting you down or, and you know, um, up, um, confronting the issue, I believe that confidence builds up from within mm -hmm. anyway. It is you and who you are. So maybe you might not leave that job or ever walk to the, your boss's office and say this and that is what is happening or sit your your partner down or your husband down and say could you, you say these things and perhaps you might never do that but you yourself within yourself you have come to the stage of saying that i will not let this thing hurt me ever mm -hmm. again and that is also an option mm -hmm. so if that person because sometimes you might even go to that boss or go to the partner and the partner still continuously decides to call you that your legs are not nice you, you understand mm -hmm. maybe perhaps they, they they just don't get how much they're hurting you so in that case it has to be you i got a lady dming me the other day and asking me that what do you do if the past is haunting you insecurities definitely is is coming from somewhere. Mm -hmm. It could be coming from your past. It could be something that is happening presently. It is something that you will have to deal with because if you don't, it would definitely kill you. A great person will become a slave if they do not know who they are. Mm. And I always say that, I told the lady, I'm not an expert of psychology or an expert of confidence, but what worked for me, I know would definitely work for a lot of people. Would you also say that faith also worked for you as well? Yes. Faith, yes. You confidence know, having your in, faith in, in, in God. Faith in God, yes. So confidence is like faith. Little, you grow it, you grow it, you grow it. And I always say that there's a thin line between confidence and root. Mm -hmm. So if you don't build the confidence from within, and, and, and it's, it's, it's just, um, and, and it gets to a point. Now you want to just prove a point, make sure it's MBA you. Confidence and confidence, being confident in yourself and confident in who you are and your purpose on earth has nothing to do with being rude really? and disrespectful to people. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. two different things. Being confident is simply knowing who you are and not allowing anybody to put you in a fix that you are not fit for. 
So someone is telling you you are there, and I'm saying, no, I am meant for here. It's two different things. It is, it is not about being disrespectful or being rude to anybody, but you know who you are. And when you are there, and they refuse to put you there, and you know you are here, what do you do? You will have to find ways of climbing back. To that place. Okay, some other person could say, okay, is self-confidence all about being able to speak in public? You see them, no. these ladies, the way they're speaking the English, they no. look so nice, they're no. eloquent. Is that all about no. confidence? No. But I would even say that confidence can also come through writing. Some people are not so good when it comes to speaking in public, but when they write, you could tell that this person knows what he or she is about. So do not feel like, okay, because I can't speak in public, it means I don't have confidence. That's not the case here. We are talking about the fact that you need to be able to believe in yourself and know your worth. Trust yourself to be able to deliver on whatever it is that you want to do. So if it's about writing and you're very good at it, go ahead and do your writing. Uh, you must not be a public speaker for everyone to know that, okay, you've got some level of confidence. We're going to be coming back to continue this conversation right after this break. Do stay tuned. And you're welcome back to ETV Ghana's African Women's Voices Show. I'm going to our Facebook page and I'm seeing your comments. And first, I want to say, oh, wow, beautiful. I am reading a comment from Mrs. Susie Ohini Asante. You are talking to us from Kaswa. And you said, I am watching your program on ETV. I'm enjoying it. I like your guest, Cassandra. Self-confidence all the way. Okay, so I'm also seeing another message also from Italy. And the person says she's Nanamwa. Nanamwa says that, wow, I love your guest. She's on fire. And I, I never knew that she was a musician. I'll look out for more songs from her. All right, okay. So I'm also seeing another message here from Bangkok. Okay, um, you said your name is Shishi, S-H-E-S-H-E. -S -H -E. Uh, I'd like to say um, a very big thank you to you and your guest. I love the self-confidence topic you've been discussing. It's really entertaining and educative as well. Thank you very much. So I'll be coming back to the Facebook messages, but I'd like to let you know that this show is proudly brought to you by Voltic, Voltic, Voltic. And Voltic says it shall come to you naturally whenever you're thirsty that you need to take your Voltic. So each commercial break, we always want you to go and take your Voltic because to keep yourself hydrated is very essential, especially in these times of the virus. You need to always cleanse your system to ensure that every form of impurity is being cleansed, okay? I'm also looking really beautiful because Afariwa Styles has made sure that I look this good. Afariwa Styles can be located on Facebook and Instagram at afariwa.styles. You can also physically locate them Oh, not far away at all, in Osu, in Accra, and also on the Bush Road at Teshi. You locate the beautiful shops of Afariwa Styles. When it comes to contemporary ladies and gents' outfits, you need to thank Afariwa. She has also made it very easy by putting out gift vouchers. So if you want to buy a gift for someone, get the person an Afariwa Styles gift voucher, and the person will be thanking you for a very long time. And my hair was proudly put together by Awo's hair. Awo, thank you so much. You know, I've really loved the hair that you've been putting together for me. And I want to say thumbs up. And uh, I know that the one you're going to do for me next is also going to be very, very beautiful. And when it comes to the best meals, wow. I've got this tomato mix that is really taking over Ghana. And even Af Africa, it is nothing else but Lizzie's tomato mix. When it comes to jollof, if you add Lizzie's tomato mix, you would love it. When it comes to the stew for the bean stew, use Lizzie's tomato mix. When it comes to making that beautiful stew that you want to use to eat your rice, oh my God, it's so nice, Lizzie's tomato mix. And katenkwan, that's peanut butter soup. If you cook it wherever you are, make sure you add Lizzie's tomato mix to it. Every dish that needs tomato mix, just add Lizzie's tomato mix to it and you will definitely enjoy it. You will just have to move away all the other types of tomato mixes you've been using because we've got a new boss in town. 
Yes. So now we're going to go back to Cassandra to finish up the conversations that we're having. But just before we go back to her, I'd like to show you a video I picked up on Facebook. And I thought that the video was really good and it was speaking to a whole lot of people who have self-confidence issues. It's a very short one, but you just look at it. Okay. So now let's link up to that video. what it is that you're experiencing self-confidence is something that you always need to always express that confidence is important it will be able to open doors of opportunities for you you need self-confidence to be able to network yeah. you go for events you come there and then you leave you don't get to meet anyone it's I challenge you need to stop all of that when you get to people mix up blend in and understand that when you pick up relationships when you network it opens a lot of opportunities for you. All right, so Cassandra. Yeah. Um, okay, I think we should open the phone lines now. The number is on the screen. You could call in to ask us any question around our conversation and Cassandra will be able to take you through that. So would you say that there are certain qualities that people who are self-confident, you know, exude? Are there certain qualities that, you know, makes you stand out as a self-confident person? It's it, because it's something that comes from within. Mm -hmm. you, you, you generally comfortable in your skin wherever mm -hmm. you are. Mm -hmm. As I explained, self-confidence is a feeling of well-being and acceptance of one's body and mind. So already if you accept yourself, accept your body, accept your mind, mm -hmm. and you have the feeling of well-being, and the third part is if you have ability in your, if you have um, believe in your ability, your skill, or your experience, most definitely wherever you find yourself in, you're relaxed, you're confident. So if you see a confident person, it's not necessarily the one talking ja, 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 like I do, that's, <laughs> but, that's, but that's my unfair advantage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it doesn't necessarily have to be that. You can be quiet. But in your quietness and in your calmness, everybody can see. It also means that, that you're a good listener. Yes. And self-confident people are good listeners. So they don't just, you know, talk. They also, even though they talk, they listen to people. So if you're a good listener, you are, you're confident, okay? If you're somebody who is able to appreciate other people, yes. you're confident as well. But yes. I hear we have a caller. Hello, caller. Hello, good evening. Good evening, please. What's your name and where are you calling us from? I'm calling from, uh, my name is Lydia. I'm calling from Kaswa. Kaswa, okay. Please talk yes. to us. I would like to ask Miss Cassandra this question. Okay. There's this scar on my leg that doesn't, I don't have the confidence to wear shorts. I always put on trousers. I don't know how to... <laughs> I don't have confidence in myself. Mm. Can you please help me with something? Mm. <laughs> All right. Um, for me, as I said, the product that helped me was um, DMK. So DMK Ghana. So basically, you can go onto my um, social media platform. It's Cassandra World. And DM me, and I can help you with a scar. But I always say that search deep within yourself. If it's something you can fix, fix it. If it's something you have no control of, then you need to come to a realization, that state of accepting who you are. And do not let that one scar be the reason why you do not achieve the greater purpose that God has for you. Because by the way, you can wear trousers or long skirts, and that will also, you know, be fine. So do not let that one scar be the reason why you do not achieve the greater purpose. There's a lot that God has placed in you, and a lot of people are ready to accept what God has put in you. Don't let that one scar be the reason why you, you do not, um, you know, live your life. So I say live your life, but if you can do something about your body, if you can do something about that scar, why not def definitely do something about it? So you can DM me on my um, um, Instagram or Facebook. It's Cassandra World, C-A-S-A-N-D-R-A, -S and the world is W-O-R-L-D, and I'll be able to assist you. Okay. 
All right. So please, um, you check her out on her social media platforms. That's Facebook and Instagram. You definitely will find her. And uh, before we leave, I would like to let you know that Chana Sheto is still <laughs> very much on my show. And I really appreciate her so much. You know, she, you told me something about Chana Sheto <laughs> that I really the, would like everyone to and know And you about. know, the packaging, the packaging is very unique. So as soon as I sat there, you know, I'm trying to, I, I just saw the CH. I'm thinking, is this Chana Sheto? It's Chana Sheto. Is this Chana Sheto? <laughs> oh my God, it is. Hi, Chana, wherever you are. I really love it. I love so it. So if you've yeah. not tried Chana Sheto, you need, you need to find Chana Sheto <laughs> because Chana Sheto is really revolutionizing nice. meals here in Ghana and across Africa. I also like to say that if you want to purchase in bulk the Lizzy Tomato Mix, I'd like you to call this number 050-140-1085 or 033-20-95314, okay, for Lizzy Tomato Mix bulk purchase. Just call the numbers I just mentioned and they will definitely attend to you, okay? So uh, to wrap up, I'd like to give a summary of what we've talked about. If you just joined us and it's very key for us, we talked about self-confidence and we like to say to you that um, some examples of, uh, of some qualities that you need to express to show that you are self-confident is that you have to refuse to be anything but yourself. So always be yourself. If you have a scar, if you have a bad relationship, if you're having ch challenges with your finances, whatever it is that is making you feel very uncomfortable, refuse to be anyone else. Just be yourself. It will really help you to gain your self-confidence back. You have to be willing to voice your opinion, even if some people don't like it. But you know, when you voice your opinion, you do it in a very civilized manner. She mentioned earlier that a boss of hers was not really treating her nice. And she gave an option that you could go to that boss and let that boss know that you don't like what it is he or she is doing to you. And you need to have the courage to share your deepest truths. So the one who called in and shared her deepest truth about how the scar on her leg is disturbing her, that is a sign of self-confidence. What you just did shows that you're confident and you really want to um, see yourself better. Do something so about since it. Uh, mm -hmm. for now we don't know if you can do something about it, we are happy that at least you've accepted that it's a scar is disturbing you. It means you're going to move ahead of it. So if you can do something about it, fine. If you can't, please rock your shorts and feel good about yourself. You've got other advantages that you need to flaunt. And then the willingness to keep going on. You can't stop just because you're not able to meet up certain expectations of people. Just be willing to keep going on. And finally, we would like you to be comfortable in your own skin. Let somebody not tell you, you're too dark, you're too fair, you're too fat, you're too thin. Be comfortable in your own skin and ensure that you're living a healthy life and you will be fine, okay? These are some of the tips that we need you to have for a fresh start in the year 2021. And the good thing too is that Cassandra is a financial advisor, advisor. right? With an insurance company. So at least you can give us one financial advisor. <laughs> To start, to start right. One, <laughs> okay, live within one. your budget. <laughs> live within your budget. Yes, live within and your budget. And get insurance. Insurance is very important. It's very important, you know, right. You never know when things will go bad. Okay. That is where insurance comes to cushion you. Mm -hmm. So don't be forced into getting insurance. Get insurance yourself for your business, you know, um, for your vehicle. Accidents do happen. It's all part of life. But get insurance so that you're cushioned at all times. That's my one financial advice for Thank you. Thank you very much. It's been really wonderful having you on our Thank show, Cassandra. Thank you so very much. And we do much. hope that you're going to come back whenever it is. I will definitely again. come back. <laughs> you just need to make that call. But oh, thank nice. you very much for having me. You're welcome. So Thank you. Uh, would you like to hear her do some, you know, a cappella? Yeah, they want to. Chavolani, <laughs> you have done a game. Yahweh is your name. You got the power and the honor to receive all of my praise. Jabulani, the Lord has done again. Yahweh is your name. Awesome, awesome. So please, uh, the repeat broadcast of this show is on Saturday at 12 noon if you're not able to start. But you could also check it out on our watch party on Facebook. You get to watch what it is that we did right now. 
However, this show comes to you live on Facebook and on TV, 8 p.m. every Wednesday. So I hope to see you same time next week. Do enjoy the rest of our interesting lineup for you on ETV Ghana. Bye-bye.